What is the New Hampshire primary like for the folks working behind the scenes? Let's ask someone who did it. B.J. Riddell worked on Bill Bradley's campaign in the year 2000. He's the author of a really good book, Only in New Hampshire, My Journey on the Campaign Trail. He joins us from Manchester. And B.J., i got to tell you, this is a good book. This is fun. Thanks, Mike. It was fun to write, fun to do. Yeah, a lot of good insights. So you guys almost pulled it off four years ago, just to remind everybody. Bill Bradley, what? As I remember, about 5,000 votes short? That's exactly right. Uh, he was up by about 10 points with a few weeks ago, then down 10 points and lost by four. And, you know, primaries are a lot about expectations. And, and the expectation was if Bradley had the lead, then he should be able to win, and he didn't. Uh, you say, uh, somebody asked if you would get back into another campaign. Uh, I know that you're not specifically running part of the campaign this year, but you said it was like falling in love. In what way? It's, it's, uh, it's like falling in love because you get behind the candidate, and even when the candidate's poll numbers drop, like we've seen Dean recently, I guarantee you those folks out in the field are still working just as hard, if not harder. Yeah. I mean, they've put their lives on hold to do this work, and that's what I did for six months and my cohorts on the campaign. So you really have to fall in love with the candidate and the idea of serving that candidate in every way. I tell you what, the people of New Hampshire really become experts on primaries. I don't think the rest of us around the country know what really goes on up there. We know there's wheeling and dealing. And our campaign guy, Carl Cameron, says, you have got to be connected or you don't have a chance. With the insiders in New Hampshire, did you learn that? Um, I, unfortunately, did not have a lot of connection to insiders, per se. Uh, a lot of the state reps and state senators had already endorsed Gore long before. So we had to go into the grassroots and find people who, honestly, had never really been involved in campaigns and try to inspire them the way we had been inspired. And it almost worked. So it just goes to show that every person matters. And sometimes a supermarket clerk will work much harder for you than a state senator. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, how do you, when you run across somebody who says they're undecided, what, what kind of mode do you go into? Oh, I'm going to win them over by doing what? Um, I've tried all different tactics, to uh -oh. be honest. Uh, in tactics, in terms of my personality, you can't be fake around New right. Hampshireites. They've seen this every four years for as many years as they can remember. So you have to g uh, walk in on their turf and approach them in their homes and say, this is why I'm doing it, and this is why I want you to consider doing it, too. I never tried to tell people this is what you need to do right. or must do. Yeah. I just encouraged them to consider it, knowing that over time, I thought, Bradley would prevail. I, it gets kind of folksy, too. You talk about staying with that family. I think you're staying ag again with them this, you know, four years later, the same family. So that's kind of interesting, too. But let's talk about this year's race. Sure. Edwards, uh, or, or Clark, rather. It seems like he was doing so well. Do you think he was hurt by how well somebody like John Edwards did in Iowa, got that great bounce, so much so that he's really concentrating on uh, New Hampshire? That is a great point. Uh, uh, really, Clark started too late to really focus on Iowa, which involves a lot of organizational skills, so he put all his eggs to start for starters in New Hampshire. He also has good organizations in some other states too. But with Edwards and Kerry doing better than expected, it became instead of a two-man race between Clark and Dean, it became a four-man or five-man race yeah. because of Edwards and, and Kerry's success. BJ, we've got to take a break here, but hang around here because I want to get some uh, predictions out of you and talk about this electability issue. We'll do that in just a second. Uh, plus, as we continue here on Fox and Friends, custody concerns over Michael Jackson's kids. What's really going on in that case? We'll talk about that a little bit and take you back out to the Golden Globes and talk about bubble wrap and Congressman from Tennessee, Harold Ford Jr. is going to be here. We have so much planned. Yeah, but I can handle the stress. Coming right back. We are back with B.J. Rudell up there in uh, New Hampshire. He wrote this book, Only in, Only in New Hampshire Can This Kind of Stuff Happen. Okay, you've been around the scene now for a little while, even though you're a, a young man. What is going to happen on Tuesday? Um, I've been averse to making predictions because you <laughs> never can tell. Uh, polls are taken, and uh, you know, the polls today, some of them show Dean back in the, in the second tier pack, which is very interesting, and Kerry kind of running away from it. But all I can say is if in two days, you know, Dean is only down by eight points, yeah. the expectations will change. Ex expectations, momentum are the great equalizers in, in primaries. Right. And so we just have to wait and see whether or not any of these other three candidates can close the gap. Whoever finishes second at this point in that pack will certainly get a boost no matter what. Hey, are you hearing the buzz a little like we are here over the last 24 hours that maybe Howard Dean kind of survived this, um, what are they calling it, Julian, the scream? Oh, I, have I have a scream I have speech. a scream speech. speech yes, yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> uh, we're kind of hearing that maybe he did survive it with a primetime interview and then especially Letterman, and then he right. might be inching back up. Well, he's passing out 50,000 videos of the interview he had with Diane Sawyer. Uh, he's got the money to do it. And, and he, he still is a viable candidate. And anyone who says that the scream is going to, you know, put him down, 
this is a guy who's been waiting a year to do this. He's been doing it for a year. He's been gaining momentum every step of the yeah. way, except for the last few weeks. I think he may have some tricks up his sleeve, and you never can tell. He has a lot of strong grassroots support. But at this point, the organization has to kick in. It's get out the, t it's get out the vote season right now in New Hampshire, and they're calling folks left and right, making sure they can get sure. to the polls. Hey, BJ, what's the number one food to eat when you're in New Hampshire? I've never really been there. I'm a diner guy, so well, eggs go. and uh, eggs See? and potatoes. People yeah. do go to diners, eggs and potatoes. Mike. He's a diner guy. <laughs> Lindy's Diner in Keene. It's where every candidate goes. Really? Wendy's? Lin Lindy. L-I-N-D-Y. Lindy's Diner in Keene, New Hampshire. you so got to go there. Very popular there I, I guess so, yeah. Hey, BJ, thanks a lot, and congratulations on the book. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Cool.